Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's Kirsten and this is going to be a really quick intro to this week's vlog because some things happened at work so I need to get going ASAP but I wanted to kick off this vlog so at the end of last week if you watched that vlog you would know that I was reading The Island of Dr Moreau by HG Wells and I did finish this last night although I did have a catastrophe with editing like I just I think it's just where you're learning a new software and I'm not a techie person so it takes me 10 times longer than it would probably take anybody else but we finally got it done and I did finally finish this book I only had 40 pages left of it and I really thought I would start another book on my TBR last night but that did not happen anyway this was a really disturbing read as I said at the end of last week and my opinion hasn't changed. I do still need to put it through Corpile, but I think it's probably gonna come out at about three stars. I was feeling four stars throughout it because the setting, the atmosphere, everything is really well done, but I feel like the ending was a little bit rushed in a way, and I know it's only a 100 page book, so that is probably why, because it's a short story, but I just feel like the pacing throughout it was really good until it got to those last couple of chapters, and then it just felt really like hurried along and I just thought you could have delved a little bit deeper into that so I just I guess I just wish it was a little bit longer to be quite honest but this was really interesting this is a horror classic and it's all about this man called Edward Prendick who got shipwrecked and ends up on this island where there are two other men you have Montgomery and Dr Moreau and they have been experimenting on animals so there are trigger warnings for cruelty towards animals because there is a lot of it it is an interesting look about human nature about trying to turn a beast into humanity is that possible so it does bring up a lot of questions and stuff but it's yeah definitely a disturbing read so pleased i got this finished and as i've been saying for the last week and a half i am still listening to european travel for monstrous gentleman by theodora goss which is the reason why i wanted to read dr moreau's island because this is a homage to horror classics again you have heard me say this several times if you watch my vlogs i do genuinely love it and i had read all the other classics that this book talks about except for the island of dr moreau so of course i had to give that a read and i'm still loving this book this is the second book in the athena club series i think it's going to be a series i'm not sure if it's just a trilogy there's three books out at the moment and this is brilliant we have basically retellings of horror classics or are they more inspirations anyway i don't have time to quibble over that right now we'll talk about that later in the week but we have mentions of dr jekyll mr hyde frankenstein dracula dr morrow's island sherlock holmes so much going on in this the setting is amazing because we're in victorian england and i'm loving it we have this group of women that have banded together that met in strange case the alchemist daughter which is book one and they are trying to solve the mystery of the society of alchemists that all their fathers seem to be a part of who have all been experimenting on their daughters so hence the name monstrous gentlewoman because they're not fully normal women i say normal i mean who's normal but that's kind of the point of this book i'm loving the audiobook i am taking my time with it because i'm refusing to read it physically even though i really want to i am planning to reread this series later in the year physically but audiobook i just think narrator is so so good it is taking me longer but i don't mind it because it's a brilliant audiobook and it's quite nice to have an audiobook that i'm genuinely so invested in because last month i really didn't get many of those so yeah that's what i'm currently reading i will be starting another book tonight but i can't decide what that is right now and as i said this is only going to be a quick introduction because i really do have to go <laughs> day to day so I'm going to attempt to do a quicker vlog update because I've got so much I want to do but first of all vlog update so I finished listening to European Travel for Monstrous Gentlewoman and of course I really really enjoyed this I'll be honest I haven't put it through Corpal just yet it was a bit slow in places so Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter had a really good pace into it this is much bigger than the first book and it is a lot more slower paced 
we have a lot more stories that are being told from different characters. There is a plot line to this, but it is more of a learning people's stories and seeing how they all connect together in these characters. So I did still like it because I like that. I like having stories being told. I like the fact that we do have so many callbacks to horror classics. So I do think it worked really well, but I will be honest and say it is a slow up book. I mean, it even took me two weeks to actually listen to it. Granted, that is because I don't listen to audiobooks all the time. It is mainly just when I'm going to and from work. But even then, it still would have been a little bit of a slower read because of the fact that it is more just like Mary Jekyll and the other women are trying to save Lucinda and along the way they go to different countries, meet other people and listen to their stories and how they are entangled in what is going on. I did still love it. I will put the star rating here and I think it was a brilliant book but it is slower paced than the first one. And I have started reading Wrath by John Gwynne. This is the fourth and last book in the Faithful and Fallen series which I am loving. I think it's an amazing series, one of my new favourite epic adult fantasy writers. I can't wait to get the rest of his books that he's written. He is such an amazing author. And I started this Tuesday evening. Yep, I've already read over half of it. It was so good. I am loving this so, so much. And I can't go into details of what this is about because spoilers are everywhere. But what I can say is we are in the middle of this god war between good versus evil, which is a very basic plotline of what is going on. We have multiple characters that we follow, multiple perspectives, but each one is important. And again, they all intertwine together, which works really, really well. It, it's amazing if you're looking for an epic adult fantasy series with some brilliant battles, really high stakes, read this book. It is so, so good and I will always recommend it for anyone looking for adult fantasy because it's fantastic and yeah I am enjoying this I'm hoping to get it read over the next couple of days but I have to admit I did take two evenings where I just chilled out and read and I just read for three hours straight on both evenings it was lovely but I know that I'm going to be busy in the next couple of evenings so it's probably going to take me longer to finish this but it is just so good it is such a good book and uh, even in this one you get battles straight from the onset there is just so much going on i will say the very first book in the series is a slower book you're having the setup you're seeing your characters you're seeing them develop but then from book two it is non-stop non-stop it is so good so that is what i am currently reading i haven't started a new audiobook i'm not sure what i want to listen to I might listen to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because I've heard so many people talk about that book. They've really enjoyed it. It's not the sort of book I would normally read, but it is available on script, so maybe I'll give it a try. I'm sorry about this lighting. It is a cloudy day. I use natural lighting, I've said it before, and it is going in and out a little bit, so apologies for that. Oh, update. I'm getting a new camera, so hopefully, depending on when it arrives, the next few videos after this will just be a little bit better quality and hopefully better sound because I've just been finding this camera is good and it was great to start off with but my sound quality needs help. So I'm now going for a camera that has an external mic so I can improve this. Fingers crossed, we'll see. As for the rest of today, I am filming a haul video, hence this beautiful stack of books. That video will already be out because that's due this Sunday so I really need to get that filmed and edited today. I also need to do Instagram photos, which if you don't already follow me on Instagram, my link is below. And then I'm going up central London because shops have opened. I've missed going shopping. So I don't plan on doing loads of shopping, honestly. It's more just to look around all the secondhand bookstores, pop into Forbidden Planet. And I also have a chiropractor's appointment later in the day. Hopefully I'm meeting my partner as well. So we have a lot. Today is a busy day, so I should really stop rambling, get on with my day, and maybe I'll chuck in a few snippets of footage to see what I've been up to on this hectic day. So I will catch up with you soon. <laughs>
I think I'm broken. I'm like, Honestly, I genuinely do. So Thursday, I did end up going book shopping. I managed to get the editing done that I wanted to do and went up central London, went to go around some books, secondhand bookstores, Forbidden Planet, Foils, all the different ones. I absolutely loved it. And how many books did I come away with? Zero. Zilch. Nada. Diddly squat. None. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, what? And it's not that there wasn't books that I wanted to get because there really was, but I just, I don't know, I just didn't get any of them. And I'd even put money aside for it to be able to go shopping, but yeah, I didn't get any of them. I was really tempted though with those special editions of the classics. There was one for Frankenstein, Dracula, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and also War of the Worlds. I was so tempted to get those because they were beautiful with their gilded edges, I mean they were stunning. But the only thing that really stopped me was the fact that one, the pages were bible thin, so it's not a book I would have ever read from, and that meant that they would just be stuck on my shelves, which at the moment my shelves are packed. I have these two and one over there as well, and they are fully packed with loads of books, so I wouldn't even be able to display them. And for Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and Dracula, I have two copies of all of those books already. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not against collecting collector's editions because I do think they are beautiful and if I'm going to collect books, I generally like to collect the classics. I just think they are the best, although I do have my collector's edition of Throne of Glass, but one of my favourite series, so of course I had to have that. But the point is, like, I just didn't end up getting them. The only one I was really, really tempted to get was War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells because I haven't read that book and Bobby from Bobby's Dusty Pages we were chatting the other day and she was telling me how much she really liked it so that is a book I want to get so I really considered getting that but because I can't read from it because the pages are so thin I'd be scared of ripping them I decided not to and I just thought I'd rather get a copy I can actually read from. Genuinely really surprised at myself I was having like a crisis as well because I was like what's happening to me and my partner's like girl you're growing up well done and I was like I don't like it I really don't like it so we'll see I mean to be fair I'm hoping to get loads of book voucher stuff for my birthday so I'll probably buy more books then but I think it was just because I have other things to pay out for so I was like as much as I put the money aside it should probably be used for like my chiropractor's appointment which was rather expensive but hella worth it anyway that was a ramble i'm sure you probably didn't need so let's get straight to what i've been reading oh no i lied one thing i want to do before that is show off these really cool bookmarks that i got they are crocheted bookmarks which i think is beautiful so my friend makes these and i bought them because i just loved them and she's the same person where a few vlogs ago i also showed off one of the animals that she makes out of crochet and she does amazing stuff like blankets, scarves, animals, nail bookmarks and I just think they're beautiful. So that's Katie Louise Crochet. I will have everything linked below. Do check her out. One, she is an amazing person and two, her products are so good, always well made, really fast shipping and yeah I absolutely love it and she's not asked me to say any of this I just genuinely love her products and as soon as she was doing bookmarks I was like okay that's it I have to get some so yeah I'm really excited to use these I just think they're so beautiful and I love the colorways there are loads more to choose from but of course I had to go for some ones that have pink in it because it's me okay back to book news <laughs> I have finished Wrath by John Gwynn and oh my god was this good. This was such an amazing book. I just had so many highs and lows in this book. I couldn't believe it. Everything was just so so good. I'm, I'm just gonna shout John Gwynn's name forever. If you want epic adult fantasy pick up his books. They are freaking amazing. I loved them so so much and this ending was so bittersweet and the battles that were going on, I mean, it's written so well that you cannot help but feel as if you're there with the chaos and everything that comes with war. Like, it was just so, so good. Absolutely loved it and I definitely want to be getting the rest of his books because John Gwynn is now become an autobi author with how much I enjoyed... I gotta let the cat in, hang on. Okay, I'm back. But yeah, so as I was saying, he has become an autobi author because I loved it so, so much. So yeah, this was brilliant and 
can't wait to read more of his books because they are fantastic. And I have started listening to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was really hesitant to go into this book, one because it's a contemporary and that's not something I read a lot of, and also because it's really hyped and that always kind of worries me a little bit in case books don't live up to the hype. But I've read the first four chapters and I do really like it. I think Evelyn Hugo is going to be a very interesting woman to learn about. I think it's going to be a good time. We are following our main character who is basically a journalist and she's just looking for her big break to really put her name out there and do the things and write the things that she wants to do. That's really interesting to see it from her perspective and then she gets offered this chance of a lifetime by Evelyn Hugo and she leaps at it. Although she does consider it quite a bit first, which I totally understand. I like the audiobook so far, definitely going to continue on with that one. So yeah, so that's where I'm at and I do need to get to work, but I've got the next two days off, which I am so happy with. So tomorrow, me and my partner are going Costco and then Monday I am off, which I am so excited for because I'm owed a day off so I decided to take it then because I've got my second Covid jab as well that day but I'm hoping to get lots of filming done, lots of editing done and we'll just see how it goes. I'll probably catch up with you after the weekend and wrap up the vlog then but for now I best get going. I have had my second Covid jab and I've just come back from it. I'm actually feeling not too bad at all, my arm's a little bit sore but that's about it so fingers crossed I stay that way. It's time to wrap up this vlog so I have been listening to more of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. In fact I've read so much of it that I've only got four hours left of the audiobook. I have really enjoyed this book, it has gripped me a lot more than what I expected. I am loving listening to the story of Evelyn Hugo and everything she's had to go through and everything she is facing. I don't want to say too much of it because I feel like it would be spoilers and I just feel like the less you know the more you'll enjoy it going into it. But it is a really impactful, empowering story about love and loss and the things that you have to do to claim the things that you want. I think it's such a good story so I am absolutely loving that audiobook and would highly recommend it to pretty much everybody. Honestly I think it's such a good book. It is a contemporary but even as a mainly fantasy reader I have fallen in love with the story of Evelyn Hugo. I just think it's amazing. I think it's really really good and I'm very pleased I'm listening to it and I will be picking it up physically because of how much I have enjoyed this book. Christina, if you're watching this, then definitely a contemporary I think you should try because I do think it's a good one and I think you might like it as well. If you do, do let me know what you think of it. Speaking of Christina, I am reading a book that I got based on her review and that is The Chalkman by CJ Tudor and I have really enjoyed this so far. I've only read the first 90 three pages. I'm only at the start of it but I can say the prologue itself is very creepy and it's definitely set the tone for the book. There is definitely some more sinister things going on. I didn't expect the undercurrent of what is happening in this book as well. Again I don't want to tell too much because it is a thriller book and I do feel the smallest of things can be spoilers in a thriller. So I don't want to give too much away on this but I can say that so far I'm definitely enjoying it. It is a bit slower paced as you would expect of a thriller and we do have two different timelines. So we have timeline from 2016 which is when our main character is in his 40s and something happened 30 years ago which I believe was the prologue and you are seeing how it has affected him and the people that he was friends with younger. There's a few things that have happened and now one of their old friends has come into town and he wants to talk about what happened 30 years ago. And then you're getting the second timeline which is 30 years ago and you're seeing what actually happened in those events, the run up to what's happened. So I'm really liking it. I think it is a good one. It's an easy read as well which I do like. I go into thrillers kind of wanting that easy read 
with hopefully enough tense atmosphere that I can think at the end of it that was a good thriller. That's what I'm hoping for. So, so far it's living up to it. But that is it for this weekly vlog. I'm going to leave it here and of course I will pick up again next week with the final star rating for Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and me continuing on with The Chalkman. So let me know what have you been up to this week, what have you been reading, enjoying, all the usual things and as always if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it that thumbs up and subscribe. My social media links will be linked below as well as any YouTubers that I have mentioned and of course I will catch you in the next one. Mm.